Hi there, we're in the next part and we're busy talking about judgment that is impending the wicked. And yet they're in denial and they still keep on going back to their silly drawing boards as if they're, they're not already haunted. Stop it. Your drawing boards are like the Ouija board. Guys, let's talk. Now, I have not been able to do what I need to do because I'm freaking out, stressing and fronting, investing all of my might, steam and fervor in trying to earn a salary, a salary, because mm. I'm tired of being poor and the Lord has seen it fit to keep me poor. Does that mean that I am lost or not catered to by the Lord of the universe? My case should be a nice little anti-example, antagonist, mm. protagonist in favor of a cause for debunking the health, wealth, and prosperity movement. Listen up. All of y'all people that believe that you are blessed and highly favored and the evidence of that blessedness is your material acquisitions and you not going through too much in life. You're unbiblical. It is probable that you might find yourself indeed highly materially blessed by God, but that is not tantamount to being the only such individual that is blessed. Blessedness and material gain are literally mutually exclusive when it comes to looking at biblical Christianity. There are believers that God has blessed financially, but that is not the only kind of blessedness that exists out there. Let us read or think of psalm 1 meditate on it hey because that's what we need to do blessed thank you there's that beautiful word is the man who does what okay it's got nothing to do with money you guys relax it's also got nothing to do with all the food in your refrigerator or the clothing in your cupboard or wardrobe it is rather the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful or of scoffers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord. And on this law, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, whose leaf does not wither, that yields its fruit and its see in its season. I mix those two around. And in everything that this person does, they prosper. But the wicked are not so. They're like the chaff that is driven away by the wind. And so therefore, the wicked will not be able to stand in the congregation of the righteous. The way of the wicked will perish, but the way of the righteous will endure forever. Let's go uppermost to that psalm again. All right. Blessed is the man who does what? Walks not on the counsel of the wicked, sits in the seat of scoffers, uh, or stands in the way of sinners. All right. This is a person that is not busy following the world. This is an individual that absolutely outwardly rejects that which Christ rejects, loves what Christ loves. This is an individual that does not just sit out a Netflix show that is scathing to the eye and the ear because of either profanity or sensuality or licentiousness or anything uh, of that nature. This is a person that's not going to cower away when they get born again in the Lord Jesus Christ, having had a historically, of course, carnal lifestyle and they had many gay friends. And these gay friends then ask him a question, so what do you believe now? And the guy then rocks up and is like guys you know i don't know right so like come on just go read the bible for you so you know look jesus loves you all no 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 this is a dude that is going to be candid and up and frank with their gay friends and say it's wrong it's a sin and i am convicted now even though historically i wasn't i was once dead and now i am alive i am a new creation they don't stand in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of the scornful they are candid and upfront with what under heaven it is that the scriptures have to say they're black and white there is no gray area and for those reasons they are seen as acceptable in the sight of god there is a holiness without which no one will see god and that holiness is not of course perfect purity because no one can ever reach that joint while we're still in these bodies of death as it is written in, in, in romans 7 but there is a holiness that upon observing a person's life you can gauge that they truly do love jesus christ if you don't walk in that minimum standard you can forget about entering into heaven it is also written in god's word that no one will enter the kingdom of heaven that doesn't have the kind of faith or the love for god that is similar to that of children the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as those they are malleable malleable 
pliable, essentially changeable, correctable, when it all correction is brought in their direction, when it all somebody opens up their eyes to rather what is the voracious, um, you know, body of work versus what is false. They take what's voracious. They take what is true. They take what is true. But the rapacity of the planet has made them want to, you know, just kind of mix God with the devil. Look, if I can get it all, then I'm going to try and get it all. I am going to go on right ahead and put a badge of Christianity on my shoulder while working in the world. Okay, no servant can serve two masters. You will either love the one and hate the other. So therefore, if you are a man that is rejectful of the global agenda, the world agenda, um, do not love the world, anything in the world, the boastful pride of life, the love of the flesh, the love of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the boastful pride of life, all of those things are of the world and the love of the Father is not in you if you walk in them. So if you reject any of these things and you, you know, accept, embrace what calamities might slap you as a result, out of either ramifications, out of e the Christian persecution, if you find yourself walking in that situation, you're like one that's nicely ducking the wicked hey when one comes along we are good so you just like you know you squat you move out the way you don't stand in the way of sinners you don't sit in the seat of the scornful so those of you who justify <clears throat> rocking up at the grammys as a christian artist i'm sorry like stop like cease and desist like people need to know when to exercise self-control hey when you stand on the same stage maverick city performing with people that don't love the world uh never mind maverick city but who's this um kirk franklin and then the other dude dietrich haddon that went on right ahead and defended uh, you know Christians that are busy attending the Grammys listen listen you are sitting in the seat of a scornful you are embracing how can you sit and watch that ridiculous menacing harlotrous display of satanic worship a seance on stage Yasam yeah, Smith and still call yourself a believer how are you not grieved on that day if the world sees it fit to acknowledge you as a gospel artist on their platform it is your responsibility to decline cordially gently uh, you know without being rude that invitation to be at the Grammys and if you win just be like thank you and walk away I mean you can't prevent the world from giving you an award for gospel music if you are truly a gospel musician but all Christian artists truly who are indwelt by the Holy Spirit have a responsibility to avoid going to things like Met Galas and Grammy Awards because it's just fellowship with the world which is enmity with God it does not make sense if you get acknowledged by them which is highly unlikely unless you belong to them if you get acknowledged by them in an awardee type capacity you have a responsibility to just not pitch give some excuse because if you go there you are not doing what god said you must do do not even allow for there to be an appearance of evil about you you've got a responsibility to decline the invitation i'm not saying don't accept the grammy rewards are due for those who work hard but you certainly have got to avoid going there otherwise it will be the tenement of watching pornography uh as a christian just because you just so happen to have a roommate that has got the same the show playing on the television that you both share you've got a responsibility to go to your bedroom and not watch just because you share the same tv so get out of the environment flee from the wrath to come be separate come out of her my people be holy for i am holy i don't know how many times i can say this people who are truly blessed do not sit in the way of sinners sit in the seat of the scornful or scornful or stand in the way of sinners we we do not mingle ourselves with them first and foremost and we also do not act as barriers to entry for believers in favor of the wicked we don't defend them we are better off by oh, like just literally shutting up and sitting in a corner and not even speaking your opinion if at all you don't know what to say on the matter but you definitely do not display your support you don't make like michelle williams you don't do any such thing you just keep quiet in a corner even though your girl beyonce is you know stands to be implicated like michelle would have done better to just keep quiet like she, she could she, she, she literally could just kept quiet she did not have to defend beyonce she did not have to beyonce would not have expected it neither would she have rejected it she just would have been like yeah nothing happened instead michelle decided to go and stand for her girl and everybody else when you are blessed you reject sin according to what the bible calls sin you do not have fellowship with the world because it is enmity with god blessed are you when you walk not in the counsel of the wicked you don't also take advice from the wicked hey eh? you don't listen to what a wicked man or a wicked woman has to say in so far as it is evil i'm not saying don't listen to wicked people at all or people of the world because they can sometimes give pearls of wisdom uh apart from their otherwise you know satanic undertones but it is for you to discern and to 
cipher it out and to filter it out with the word of God. And if at all it is unacceptable, you need to flat out just be like, yeah, buzz, I sorry, can't take that advice. So having spoken all that then, help me help you understand that the health, wealth and prosperity movement or those who believe that Christians are only highly favored, blessed and all that and jazz when they've got material acquisitions. I'm sorry, it is probable, likely that they might be blessed because God has seen it fit to give them all that wealth. I mean, he did it with David, did it with Solomon. He did it with so many Joseph. Ultimately, he did make his Christians blessed, highly so, financially. He did it with Job eventually, in fact, initially, and then ultimately too. In the middle, he was bereft with poverty like me, right? So God can indeed bless you materially, but you should not equate material blessedness with spiritual blessedness. They are mutually exclusive entirely, and they could indeed exist in one bubble uh, because the Lord, they could correlate and because the Lord has indeed blessed you as a Christian in that capacity. But if he doesn't, your response ought to be like that of Job. Naked I came into this world, naked shall I get out. The Lord has given and the Lord has taken away yet in all that I do, I will praise the one true God. That's how you should react. So poverty should not make you think God don't care, doesn't exist because there are so many souls in these scriptures that have adored the king of the universe that were poor all the way up until they died. For crying out loud, uh, Samson had a coming, frankly, but like he essentially died a poverty stricken man because of what he did with Delilah. But at the end of his life, the Lord gave him strength and growth and valor again because he stopped standing in the way of sinners, sitting in the way of scorners, so uh, of, of the scornful. So at the end of his life, he killed more Philist Philistines than he did when he was uh, alive. There are a, a lot of, of believers that died in squalor and poverty. Some of them weren't even told us what happened to them eventually because of persecution. Like, for instance, Micaiah, who prophesied um, death over Ahab in battle uh, and we were just told that he was thrown in prison and fed meager portions of bread and water we were not told anything else after that about him so the guy might have died in prison the dude might have gotten out but he certainly did not uh, uh, pass away a wealthy man Christians in history the early church have been martyred do you understand killed for their faith hung upside down on crosses fed to beasts in the Colosseum in Rome and in Nero they have have been through a lot and a lot of them died in poverty if anything in the book of revelation is written there are these um christians under the altar that were killed that were massacred and they want justice so when you die in all of that lowliness according to the things of this earth you are blessed according to god because the greatest on the earth are going to be the least in the kingdom of heaven and vice versa so it's irresponsible your bible is a pamphlet if at all you look at the health wealth and prosperity portion of wealthy believers in christ as the only ones that are blessed do not write any wealthy person off as belonging to the camp of creflo dollar because they could indeed love god I mean, who's this? Billy Graham was wealthy, but he was he was sound to God. Do you understand what I'm saying? And modern day, let's think about one that's alive right now. John MacArthur is healthy. Well, not healthy. Well, maybe that too. But what I wanted to say was wealthy. He is wealthy. Um, that does not make him an unbeliever. If you understand what I'm saying. Uh, I believe Ray Comfort is also wealthy. You get my point. So it's not the tenement or equivalent. God can, however, bless these Christians in this way, but he doesn't always do it. And some of us, he doesn't even give wealth at all. All the way up until we die, we could die in poverty hours is to hold on to the name of the lord all the way up until we pass on that's what we need to do because our wealth and our treasures are not here on earth where moth and rust destroy and thieves come in to steal it is in heaven above and when you've got that mindset that's what keeps you cool calm collected chilling maxing out reading the bible like it's a newspaper you know the way you're so chill you're just relaxing on a sunday afternoon like with your legs reclined you'll be your chair reclined and your legs up on a table reading the newspaper like a really relaxed oaky that's how you deal with people leaving you in squalor, thinking that you're going to one day abandon Jesus. Understand all that they're doing on that day is making like their father the devil and grabbing an innocent soul and just putting it at a mountaintop and telling it, worship me and I shall give you all the kingdoms of the world. I'm sorry, just like Jesus. My answer will be, ah, what are you doing? I shall worship no other God but the one true, so no, I'll pass. That's what's good. It is a temptation, and in the absence of, you know, rejecting and taking that one way out that the God has given you, you're going to find yourself in some pretty hot water. You don't want to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. You don't want to commit the unpardonable sin. You don't want to go back to the vomit after vomiting as a little piggy or a doggy, whichever one is, is the one that vomits. The piggy is the one that goes back to the mire. You don't want to do that, okay? What you want to do is tell the devil what Christ told him upon being presented with similar temptations man does not live by bread alone but um by the word that proceeds
is from the mouth of God. Shall not worship no other God but the one true God. And um, what was the other one? Thou shalt not test the Lord, your, the Lord your God. Okay, we have a responsibility to act like Christ when presented with the same temptations that he was presented with. However many times in repetition, they keep on, you know, being tested. So however many times they keep on throwing you with the same tests over and over and over and over again. I mean, Penina was this whining rando at the ears of Hannah for years. Yeah, you don't have any kids. For, I don't know how long, it is not spoken. It is not written in the scriptures how long it is that Hannah endured that ridiculousness so even like repetitive cycles of the same kind of calamity that keeps on slapping you is not an excuse to say God doesn't care about me because the scriptures have made it clear that not only are you blessed when you avoid wickedness but you're also blessed when you endure rubbish for avoiding wickedness out of either beatitudes blessed are the persecuted so no let go of Christ for what the hell that you're going to I'll pass next part